All right. Welcome to Thursday afternoon at the NASA booth. <clears throat> Almost done. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, my name is Dan Duffy, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the uh, computing center. And that's going to lead us into some high-resolution atmospheric model simulation that's being done at, at, at NASA Goddard. Uh, and have some fun. Uh, guys, sit back and relax for the next uh, 14 minutes. Play. We just got like 30 extra seconds. That's awesome. So uh, it all starts from observations. Of course, being NASA, you know, they have a, a fleet of observation satellites and remote sensing platforms and all, you know, all kinds of measurements that are taken. Of those measurements, are, of course, brought in. Those measurements are, are, are handed over to uh, large-scale atmospheric models. Uh, and other types of models, but I'm going to talk mostly about the, the global circulation models. And I'll show you some great visualizations in a minute on that. So those uh, observations are put into uh, uh, code that's you know hundreds of thousands of lines of Fortran. Anybody know Fortran? Okay. Oh wow, this is a lot of people know Fortran. The young people in the audience are like, "What's Fortran?" So you have Python. I got Python. Okay, so. So the, the Fortran code runs through hundreds of thousands of lines, and it puts out quite a bit of, uh, of model output. In some of these cases, some of these models outputs are, are you know, tens of terabytes to hundreds of terabytes, even petabytes. Now, the products that NASA puts out from these models, these are research forecast models. They're reanalysis, re uh, as well as the observation models or, or, or observation outputs are all free and open. If you know where to go and find them, and there's a number of people here at the NASA booth who can tell you how to get that data. Okay, So just keep that in mind. All the data that we get out there is free and open for everybody to consume. But we've been doing this for a while, so I've been leading the High Performance Computing Group at NASA Goddard uh, for a long time, and we've done HPC for a long time. These are big systems, systems the sizes of rooms, right, that you have to, that you, that you have to put these uh, models on. Over the last 10 to 15 years, our uh, HPC resources have increased by a thousand fold. So we now have five petaflops of compute, five times 10 to the 15th operations per second. It's a lot of, a lot of calculations. We have over 100 petabytes of storage in our environment. These, uh, these models generate huge amounts of storage, huge amounts of data. 100 petabytes of storage is equivalent to having a, uh, a Google playlist that's about 260,000 years long without ever having to listen to the same song twice. It's pretty good. It's longer than my daughter's playlist. Not much, but it is. So it gives you an idea of the, uh, in, you know, how big these computers are that's needed to create these models. And, and what we've done is starting from many years ago to now, we've been able to increase and increase the resolution of these models over and over again. And we're going to show you exam an example of that. This is an Icelandic low simulation. It's going to start from the current resolutions of reanalysis data sets at about 50 kilometers square. So each pixel is going to be about 50 kilometers square across the surface of the Earth. And you can see, a, okay, you can see a front. All right, that's not too bad. What we're going to then do is we're going to drop from the 50 kilometer resolution down to 12, which is the current operational resolutions of, of the research model that's being done at NASA, but also at NOAA. And uh, I think the European model is a little bit higher. Now we can see the front, and we can see some features behind the front. We can see some, see, see some features in, in front. Now we're going to drop to the, the highest resolution that we can run to date. It's a one and a half kilometer simulation. This one and a half kilometer simulation, it, it, it takes a long time to run, and many, many thousands of cores to do it. But you begin to see just how impressive of the features that we can pull out. So you see, of course, the uh, convection that's occurring on the front there. You can see uh, when it comes back here, you'll be able to see what happens out uh, some high, thin clouds in front. You'll see some marine layer. You'll see this convection that occurs in the, at the surface driven by the winds behind the front. So let's go to the higher resolution. So we're going to zoom out just a bit and show you this Icelandic low at a little bit uh, uh, wider view. You'll see the east coast here. You'll see some fantastic convective cells coming through here, some deep convection there, some mesoscale convective systems, and the Icelandic low that comes out there. So you see this nice marine layer out here. You'll see some high, thin, serious clouds out front. But just let that run for a bit, and you can see how much uh, the higher resolution models can, can expose. You know, this, uh, this model is, uh, again, a one and a half kilometer resolution is the highest resolution of the, of the research models to, to date that we've run. It takes about 30,000 computer cores. Uh, we can simulate about four or five simulation days per day. So we can't run that in real time. Uh, but that's the target. 10 years from now, when we come back and we show you, it's, uh, you know, the highest resolution you know, uh, operational models, that's kind of the target. In about 10 to 15 years, we want to target one and a half kilometer resolution runs every few hours on the computer. And then maybe at that point in 10 years, our research runs are going to be down to the hundreds of meters of, of resolution, generating petabytes and petabytes of, of, of data. Okay, we'll move on to, uh, in addition to clouds, these models at the Global Modeling Simulation Office at the, at the Goddard 
uh, Space Flight Center. Also, look, take a look at aerosols. Aerosols, are, of course, are becoming uh, uh, very important to look at. This is looking at carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and what we're going to do is this is going to angle this. This is a fantastic visualization done by the SVS from the output of the data simulation and forecast model done, run at Goddard. So they take the OCO2 data, the Orbital Carbon Observatory data, and they run this through in a simulation and a forecast. Now, what they've done here with the visualization, they've new, move, removed the middle uh, areas of the carbon dioxide, the middle concentration of the, of the carbon dioxide. They've keeping the high and the low, the high of course being red, the low being blue. And that'll give you the ideas of the differences here. So you see that they've also extended the surface features, exaggerated those. So again, you can quickly see how carbon dioxide moves around very, very fast throughout the atmosphere. You can see how it interacts with some of these features on, on the ground. You can see up here in the stratosphere how it's not mixed yet. So there's still low concentrations up here. We are now in the, um, um, entering the spring months of the year. If it's down, I I'm, I'm, can't see it right here. I'm, I'm blocking it, but uh, we're into the early 2015 timeframe. So we're going into spring, going into summer. And of course, at that point, there's a high concentration of carbon dioxide in the Northern Hemisphere. And as the Northern Hemisphere begins to green up, it's gonna to begin to uptake that carbon and sequester that carbon out of the atmosphere, and it slowly starts to dissipate in the Northern Hemisphere. You'll see a couple other features here. They'll see some fires in, uh, in the Africa as well as uh, South America. And if you look closely, you'll be able to see some pulsing that occurs. That's the diurnal cycle that occurs, even for the, the, uh, the aerosols that are near the surface. So again, taking remote observation data that takes swaths of data, uh, mixing that with uh, observations from, from the ground, uh, run that through a very high resolution data simulation and forecast model, and you get a, you're able to see a global picture of aerosols uh, in the atmosphere. So we'll change from carbon dioxide and we'll go to a different view of aerosols, looking at the uh, hurricane season from this past year. So this is uh, the, 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 just a couple months of the hurricane season, very active 2017 hurricane season. But we're not gonna look at hurricanes uh, from a, just a water vapor or some infrared brightness temperature, simulated temperature. What we're gonna do is we're gonna look at it from the aerosols. This gives us a new picture, a new look of hurricanes. There's three aerosols up here. There's carbon, there's dust, and sea salts. So what you see here, of course, the white, you'll see huge amounts of carbon in the atmosphere from, from fires out west, and you'll see how quickly that, uh, that dust gets picked up and moved across the continent all the way over into the, uh, uh, all the way over into Europe. You'll see dust coming off of Africa, dust reaches very far across Africa, picked up, picked up by these systems, comes all the way over, lands in the Amazon basin, lands on the east coast. We have uh, dust in our clean rooms at Goddard from Africa. And it's carried in by people, that's how it gets in. So sometimes there may be dust clouds that come over all the way across. They reach, uh, the, some, sometimes the, the dust reaches all the way in the Midwest, smoke comes down from fires, and you get a drop in temperature that may be 10 degrees below normal temperatures because of the reflection of the aerosols. Harvey's down there, you see a picture of Harvey coming in and it's picking up a huge amount of sea salt. So you see that circulation that, uh, that's occurring, that's picking up uh, all that sea salt. Harvey's gonna come into the Gulf, it's gonna pick a huge amount of sea salt up, it's gonna hit landfall, and then it's gonna rain all that salt out. And you'll see that as, as the aerosols will get you know, uh, deposited out of the uh, hurricane from the rainfall. Uh, Harvey does the two landfalls, right? So it'll hit land, it'll come back out, pick up a huge amount of, uh, of sea salt again. Uh, and land and, and go back in and land. So there is, you know, wet deposition of all the sea salt out. It's coming back out, picking up more of that, and then it's going to hit again. What you'll see as, you, as these hurricanes form, you'll see them pick up those dust clouds and swirl those dust clouds. You'll see Irma right there. See how much dust is swirling around Irma. And again, as Irma gets farther and farther away from the, from the um, uh, African coast, uh, that dust will begin to get rained out. And again, as Irma's coming along, look how much smoke is coming in uh, from the Midwest and upper Midwest. And look how far it goes transported. So you have these wonderful features of the, uh, the front. So you have Irma keeping all the smoke up there, the, all the sea salts there, and how far that smoke goes all the way over into uh, Europe and to England. So here we have uh, both, uh, all, all three hurricanes at once. Very active season, of course, with the large systems. There's Jose. Uh, Irma's gonna go through uh, uh, Florida. Anybody from Florida had to evacuate because of Irma? My brother had to evacuate because of Irma. Didn't go too far, but it was not too bad. Huge amounts of rainfall. There's Jose in the, in the uh, uh, Atlantic there. It's not gonna make ran landfall, but it's gonna wind its way up there and quickly go into the uh, upper Atlantic. You'll see Norma over here. You'll also see some uh, the, the convergence zone, the intertropical convergence zone, the ITCZ over here, which is really nice to see. 
you'll see some sea salts coming in over the Pacific, and again, all these fires. Huge dust storm there that comes off. Lee gets there. Maria's going over Puerto Rico right now. Uh, and that's going to go up the uh, coast. You'll see the interactions between Maria and Jose here in just a second as it goes up. You'll see this, this is an interesting interaction with these three circulations right here. And again, you'll see, in the, you see that uh, sort of you'll, the, these, these aerosols will follow those fronts. You know, it's almost like another Icelandic glow that just happened there with all the smoke in the upper right there. You can see that. We're going to let this play all the way to, like, it's, it's, a, it's a movie that's about five minutes long. <clears throat> uh, all of these are online. Uh, there are some nice little uh, giveaways here. They can take them away. On the back, there is a, a wonderful website address that you can get these movies down and download. Uh, I would encourage you, before you, um, the holiday season, to maybe go get some of these, download them on your laptop. It'll give you something to talk about during your dinners with family members that may not be politics. It's good, good stuff, right? So just keep that in mind. We'll get some of those before you leave. It's always good to have something other than that to talk about, right?